Hey and welcome back to another video. So in our last video within this course we actually broke down what a REST API is and how we can use it in our apps to interact with a service to get the latest data. So if it's your first time viewing this video you should definitely check out the previous videos what is a REST API which is part of the Swift UI iOS take home test course. Now in this video we're going to look into building on top of this and breaking down what JSON is and how and where it's used. So JSON actually stands for JavaScript Object Dotation. It's a lightweight way for storing and sending data over services like REST APIs. Now in the industry, it's one of the most common ways of sending and receiving data from API services. Now there's alternative ways, but when you do a takeover tech project, more than likely you'll be working with JSON. So we've spoken about what it is, but what does JSON actually look like? Well, normally JSON can be used to easily, you know, send data over services, but it's also a great way to represent either an object or a collection of objects. So when you're working with JSON as a single object, you normally create it like this. So you normally create it by having a open and closed curly brace with key value pairs within it, like a snippet that you can see on the screen. So as you can see here on the screen, we have a simple object, which is me, and I have a bunch of key value pairs. Now the key is on the left hand side, and this is what we use to access the data on the right, which is the value within it. Now we're not just limited to using a single object. If we wanted to, we can also have a collection of objects as well. And this is normally denoted by using the square brackets, which contains a bunch of objects separated by a comma, as you can see on the screen here now, where we actually have an array of users and they're actually separated with a comma. So now we have a collection of users that we're either able to send or receive via our API. Now in the example that we'll be working with in this free course, more than likely, this is what the data will look like. It will be an array of resources which we will display on the screen. Now it's also possible to nest objects within another object in JSON2 and we can do this by using the curly brace after a key and we'll look at how to actually nest JSON in our next videos where we actually write our own JSON as well. Now in the examples that we've shown before, we didn't actually discuss this, but if you actually looked at the values, there was actually a mixture in there. And the reason why is because JSON actually supports different data sites, different data types for its values. So some of the data types that you can actually use within JSON are the following. So if you wanted to, so if you wanted to, you could use a string, you could also use a number, you could use an object, you could use an array, you could use a boolean, and you can also represent data as a null. So at the time of this video, these are the data types that you can use within your JSON objects. Now, one thing that I do want to touch on that hasn't been listed here is date. Now, date isn't actually a data type and it's actually represented as a string. But one thing that you will see a lot of is dates that actually look like this. So what this is, is that this is a specific format that has been agreed as a standard and used universally and it's called ISO 8601. Now this format is actually breaking into, broken up into the following. So the first part is the year, followed by the month, followed by the day, and then you have the T there, which essentially acts as a separator to basically say that the next bit is going to be the time. So anything before the T is the date, and anything after the T is time. So after the T, the first value that you have is your hour, and then you have your minutes, seconds, and nanoseconds, and then at the end, you have the time zone offset. So if you see Z, this normally means that this is a UTC time zone, but if you see plus, you know, five, um, zero, zero, then that means that you're five hours ahead. So this is how you basically, you know, denote the time zone that someone is in. So using this format, ISO 8601, will make your life a whole lot easier when you're actually interacting with dates in your application because in Swift, you can actually tell the application in code to specifically decode dates from this string format. So try to stick to this format as much as possible. Now that we saw how JSON looks like and how it's actually used, 
Well, you want to send a network request normally with this JSON within the request body. Like I mentioned in what is an API, this is normally the data that is sent along an API request. So what will happen is you'll send data to an API using JSON and the service will then use that JSON to carry out some kind of task and then give you a response. Or alternatively, you can ask an API to give you back some data but in JSON format so that you can manipulate and use it within your application. So if you actually go to the request API that we'll be using within this course, so if you actually go to the API, you'll notice that the request body that you actually send is in JSON here, if you want to create a user, and the response as well is also in JSON as well. So you can see here in this example that when in terms of receiving and sending data, it's all handled using JSON. All right, cool. So. That's everything in this video. If you enjoyed it, I'd really love to hear your feedback in the comment section below. Also as well, if you haven't already, I'd really appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up as well as subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to get updates for whenever I release a new video. That's everything from me. I'll catch you on a bit. Deuces.